When I was nine, I made my first website. Pause. I know what you're thinking. This man was born in a certain South Asian country. Starts with an I, ends with an A. When he was born, his destiny was written in the sand to become the next Steve Jobs or Bill Gates. His first language was some form of code, and his first words were hello world rather than mommy or daddy. Uh, no, that was not true. I was just your average nine-year-old Indian child. And speaking of nine-year-olds, why would a nine-year-old build a website? That's not what nine-year-olds do. Well, one day during my summer break, my dad sat me in front of a computer and told me to make a website. And having nothing better to do, I said, sure, why not? So I go onto my computer and search up <clears throat> how to make a website. Enter. Click the first video. It's seven hours long. <laughs> I sit and I watch the whole thing. I take pauses and I, to follow along, I open up the world's most premier code editor, Microsoft Notepad, and I keep on going. And I grind for about 12 hours. I started at 10 and I ended at 10. And when I finished, guys, I know you're gonna love this. Microsoft, Amazon, where are my junior developer contracts? <laughs> but all jokes aside, I felt something. I felt a feeling I couldn't describe at the time, something I didn't know. It felt like a euphoria. I felt the power going through my fingertips. I felt like a god who could sculpt his ideal world and fit whatever he desired. But this was during summer break, and when summer break was over, I just left it in the recycling bin, never to see it again. Then, three years later, when I was 12, I started learning Python. No, this isn't, I'm not a snake tamer, this is the programming language we're talking about here. And Python is recommended for beginners as it's the best, as it reads like English. So, naturally, that's where I start. And as I followed the tutorial, so the tutorial was very eerily similar. I go onto YouTube, search up free Python tutorial, click enter, click the first option on YouTube. It's seven hours long. <laughs> and I watch the whole thing and I open up my code editor and I follow along with the tutorial just like I did with the website. But once I finished, it didn't feel right. I didn't get the same kick out of it. But I kept on going. I followed more tutorials and more tutorials. And I did that for about a month. And when I finally finished that last tutorial, I felt nothing. <laughs> I felt empty. Instead of feeling like a god who could do whatever he wanted, I felt like a mortal bound by the chains of human ingenuity and logic and reasoning. And that's when I had an epiphany. This is why people don't code. <laughs> when I asked my friends why they don't program, the, it boiled down to two reasons. One, they thought it was boring. And two, they thought they weren't smart enough for it. With this mindset, you're viewing programming by its stereotypes. You're viewing that you need to be a math person. You have to have a really big IQ. You need to just fit all of these criteria before you can even think about programming, which is simply not true. <clears throat> we often think of programming as boring, logical, and industrial, and we view it through one path. However, there's another side that we tend to forget about, and it's the one I discovered first, the artistic side of it. The definition of art, according to Cambridge Dictionary, is the making of objects, images, music, etc., that are beautiful or that express feelings. Now, I present the following statement to you. Programming is an art. Now, that might sound like an oxymoron, but that is exactly where the crux of the matter lies. We don't think about it like this. 
Programming is actually a creative process, one that involves a deep imagination, problem solving, and a deep, Im and a deep understanding of the world around us. When we code, we are creating something out of nothing, building complex systems out of simple instructions. And just like with an actual, just like with art, the process is more fulfilling than the end product. Coding follows a very similar path to making a painting, for example. First comes the vision, the idea, such as a really cool app you want to build or a painting you want to make. For encoding, your code editor is your canvas with your keyboard and fingers as the palette and the paintbrush. As you type along, you fill that painting up and when you're finally finished, that end product you get the satisfaction of making an end product that you created with your ingenuity. And that's what, and that was the reason I found coding so captivating. As a nine-year-old, I couldn't tell you then, but programming was a form of self-expression for me. It was something, think about it like an artist or a painter or an author. An author expresses their thoughts and expresses themselves onto their books. An artist does so with their paintings and artwork, and a programmer does the same with their code. Code lets people create and share their own unique ideas and projects. When you solve a problem or create something unique, you did it in your unique, you did it in your own way, with your way of thinking and your way of implementing that solution. I'd like to end off with the, with the causes of this. Why do we think about programming like this? Well. Although there are many factors, I boil it down to two reasons. The first is pop culture. Pop culture tends to stereotype programmers as nerds. And right here, that's uh, high school Bill Gates. And, you know, he gives off those nerd vibes. He's got the look. He's got the glasses. He's got the hair. He's got the, um, I don't know, the whole room of computers. <laughs> and, and people tend to correlate nerds as being geeky, quirky, and overly intelligent compared to the average person. So people correlate programming with being geeky, boring, and requiring a high amount of intelligence. But the second and most important is the way we're taught. The first picture above is a creative, like, exploring mindset. Let yourself go free. Let yourself ask questions. Figure it out on your own. Get your hands dirty. Build something. The second, bo the bottom picture, the bottom two pictures are what 99% of coding tutorials will teach you. When you, they make it look like you're making progress, but when they give you a practice problem, they're expecting one solution from it. There, you don't even get asked the simple question of make something cool, like make a game that you want to make. They say solve a problem, like make a translator that translates this into that, or add up all the numbers in this list. You're locked into this one path where you're only allowed one solution to a problem and you're not allowed to explore anything yourself. And whenever I'd implement those solutions, they'd be in this really boring black box every single time for a month. I don't wanna look at this, I wanna look at something like that or like this. This was made in Python, the same language I described as extremely boring. The difference is that they let their creativity go on when they made this. I wasn't allowed to do that. People don't program to look at black boxes. They program to make something. They get their hands dirty. Just, they want to push something out. <clears throat> if we teach coding like this to the next generation, what's going to happen? <clears throat> if we can teach people to code, that's not the problem. The problem is the way we're taught. If kids are going to learn coding through this locked, fixed mindset, there's no room to grow. And they're going to be using this tool a lot more in the future to develop a lot more creative systems. They won't innovate they won't, because they weren't taught to. They're on, they will only be taught to look for solutions, that, to look for problems that only have one simple solution. So. Anyone here, the next time you're thinking of coding, um, if you don't like it, maybe look at it through the lenses of an artist rather than a robot. Who knows, maybe you too could feel like a god. <laughs>